The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Let's give everyone a minute or two to join. I know there's a lot of folks that are uh, jumping session to session here. We're, uh, for everyone that's joining, we're just going to give uh, just a minute or two here to make sure that everyone had a chance to uh, to switch over to the uh, to the different platform from their uh, their virtual ICC sessions. Before we get started, to uh, for everyone that isn't aware, behind Joe, just over his shoulder there, that is Geralt the Giraffe. Uh, for those of you that didn't get a chance to attend the ICC in-person event, uh, Geralt was a prominent uh, fixture on the scene. Um, he was wearing the, uh, the the ICC socks, and, and what else did he have on there, Joe? He had the official ignition perspectacles circa ICC a few years ago, uh, so which he's. Uh, He's not wearing it at the moment, but this is his normal prominent spot next to me. Uh, you know, we do some some parallel programming together, so he's he's constantly observing and commenting out uh, coding mistakes and all of that. So it's nice to nice to have him around. He's a he's a core part of the team, and he definitely wanted to be here with us on this uh, the showcase today. All right, for for everyone that's just jumping on again, we're. Just giving people a minute or two to join. I know folks were jumping session to session, so uh, just trying to be uh, give everyone just a few more seconds here, and then uh, we'll get started uh, at uh, three minutes after 1.33 or 10.33 or some other 33, depending on where in the world you happen to be. And why isn't Garrett wearing his perspectacles now, Joe? I don't know. I was uh, trying to decide between the perspectacles or the uh, the nice 4IR giveaway sunglasses that, uh, that we gave away, and uh, neither one was was uh, was handy. So now you get to see the uh, you know we want a different view as well, right? We gotta we gotta mix them up a little bit. He is wearing a shirt, but he's so far down you can't even see the shirt that he's wearing. So we'll have to start positioning him. Maybe for the next podcast we'll position him at a different place so you can uh, you can see more of the uh, the the beauty that is uh, that is Geralt himself. I want to get a hat. Cool. That's what he needs is a hat. <laughs> if anyone has a hat that they'd like Geralt to wear, we'll uh, we'll gladly accept donations of, uh, of any hats. So, all right. Uh, so I think I'll get started. Uh, thank you everyone for your time. I hope everyone is having a fantastic time at Virtual ICC this week. Um, I know it's been really great to see uh, to see some of the sessions and some of the information that's presented. Um, what we're going to be sharing with you today is we're going to talk a little bit about our solutions. Uh, specifically, we're going to go through uh, security DevOps and complexity-free management using uh, both Factory Stack and Pharma Stack. And we're going to introduce you to a little bit more about our company and how, uh, how we operate it and how we fit into the grand scheme of the uh, inductive ecosystem. Uh, so I'll start off by introducing myself. So, my name is James Bernand. I'm the CEO of 4IR Solutions. Uh, I've been in the industry over just over 20 years. I spent the majority of that time working for systems integration companies. Um, I have a passion for innovation and computing and security and networks. Uh, I've, I've been around since prior to virtualization and now I'm really happy to see uh, the, the cohesion of IT and OT and, and helping customers and really working through that journey towards digitalization and all the parts and pieces that go along with that journey uh, in support of that. Uh, Joe? Uh, and I'm uh, Joe DeLivo, the CTO of 4IR Solutions. Uh, also have a background uh, as a system integrator. I've been working within the ignition community for a number of years now as a, a happy end user and now as a, a consultant and builder of products on top of that platform. Spent a lot of time doing ERP integration specifically to SAP. Um, and now a lot of time working with DevOps principles, some of the cloud native technologies and things that we'll be showcasing today. I'm excited to have a discussion. And then as, as mentioned earlier, joining us is also Geralt the Giraffe, who uh, 
is our, uh, our our team mascot, and uh, and happy to happy to be here. He doesn't have a slide just yet, but if you hold on, he uh, he may appear later in the presentation. Cool. Thanks, Joe. Uh, as a as a fun little surprise, uh, we didn't mention this or, or announce this before, but uh, we are going to be giving away a set of AirPod Pros today. So. Uh, for those of you that have uh, have taken the time to join us live, uh, we're going to be selecting at random one of the attendees, uh, and we will be announcing later on in the slide presentation who the big winner is. Uh, we will reach out to you afterwards, collect your information, and and send you the uh, the free gift uh, as a part of as a, as a thank you for attending, um, and, and we will really appreciate it. So, thank you. Um, so first, before we get started, uh, I thought it was important for us to maybe do a little bit of a check as to where everyone is at around cloud adoption and hybrid cloud adoption. So uh, what we've done is we've prepared a real simple poll uh, where we're going to ask folks where they are in that journey. So really what we're looking for is, is, is cloud and hybrid something that you're not doing today and you don't really have plans for it? Is it something that you're somewhere along the journey or thinking about it? You're doing some testing, you've got some plans laid out, but it's not quite at the maturity level that uh, that you need to get it to um, eventually. Or are you one of the uh, the folks who's got it all figured out? You've you've got a strategy, you've got a plan, you're you're planning and moving workloads, you've got an active uh, presence in the cloud and plan to to take advantage of the benefits that are uh, that are available by doing so. Uh, so I'm going to stick up a poll on the screen here. And hopefully everyone can see that. I'll give you guys a, a few minutes here to, uh, a few seconds here to, to answer. Oh, wait, I didn't actually hit launch. Sorry, my bad. Uh, poll is launched. If you guys want to click in on your answer. Give everybody just a few more seconds here. It's kind of neat that it actually gives me a percentage. All right, I think 90% is as high as we're going to get, folks. But uh, let me just close the poll here and share the results with everyone. Uh, so, as I kind of expected, most folks are in the somewhere in between stage of cloud adoption, which uh, which is is really uh, makes a lot of sense given where we're at in the maturity of the OT space and and the availability of applications. Um, you know, I, I think there's a lot of different benefits and opportunities, but it's kind of hard to know where to get started for a lot of people. And, and certainly we, uh, we've we seen, you know, very few folks on either end of the spectrum where they're not considering it at all or where they've all got it all figured out already. So, um, you know, thank you all for, uh, for your participation in the poll and uh, I'm gonna find the results. And so, wanted to do a quick introduction as to who 4IR is. Um, so we've been a part of the Ignition community for a number of years and in our current form we've been about 18 months. Um, really what we've been focused on is how do we blend the best of IT technologies, plant floor applications, automation, uh, and OT, OT know-how into our products and offer that as a simple to use seamless experience that users can take advantage of some of these uh, these, these promises that are made by the cloud and by hybrid architectures without necessarily having to go through the investment cycle or the time necessary to, to build all that know-how and capability themselves. Uh, what we feel, what we offer is hybrid cloud solutions that increase efficiency, scalability, and they reduce the amount of resources and costs that you have to incur. So the problems that we're really working to to address is, is we really see it as everyone's got a combination of really three different problems, complexity, security, and, and skills. Blended together, what happens is it creates fear and apprehension. The economic benefits of leveraging the cloud are real, and if you're not seizing those benefits, you might be falling behind your competitors. We look to help close that gap. And the way we do that is with our products. We offer fully managed cloud infrastructure that enables manufacturers to simplify OT, increase efficiency and scalability, and reduce the amount, reduce the amount of resources and costs. So our flagship platform, Factory Stack, is designed for wide use across industries. It includes such features as source control, DevOps, remote monitoring and management, operating system and patch updates, application software updates, and custom architectures with other complementary software that allow for a full infrastructure to be deployed. PharmaStack, built on top of Factory Stack, is our GXP-ready platform 
as a service that offers that makes validation of breeze and comes with an example product or project highlighting how to use ignition for things like data integrity and electronic signatures for 21 CFR Part 11 compliance. It's also worth noting that both Factory Stack and PharmaStack are offered in cloud or on prem using our hybrid cloud offerings. We're also able to offer it in both our subscription as well as a customer subscription uh, for AWS or Azure. So I'm going to hand it over to Joe, and he's going to talk a little bit about the demo, and we'll we'll dig right in. Joe. Awesome. Thanks, James. So this is really the part where we're going to get uh, a little bit technical, but actually show you a working example of what Factory Stack and PharmaStack enable you to do. And uh, the screenshot on the right is basically a visual flow as to what we're going to showcase. And if you either were at ICC Live uh, a couple of weeks ago, or if you're going to be attending the session tomorrow, uh, we are doing a session called Get Serious Hybrid Cloud Deployment with, uh, with DevOps. And it's going to be basically showcasing how you can manage multiple environments, um, some of the automation that can be used under the hood to enable this. And this is uh, a, a portion of the core that we provide out of the box with Factory Stack and PharmaStack. So the diagram on the right is a little bit simplified, but it's meant to showcase basically doing a zero downtime push to production. Um, so we're gonna go through logging in to Ignition using your Azure Active Directory uh, account, which is probably something you're using if you're an Office 365 or a Microsoft 365 user already, maybe a Windows user. Um, we're going to actually make a change via the Ignition Designer to a development instance. And then we're going to go through a process called a pull request uh, for basically being able to review the changes that were proposed. Um, and we can have a quality person who's able to review those and then uh, approve those or reject those and comment as appropriate, which gives you an audit trail of changes. Really, really important, especially for life science companies. But even anytime uh, you want to prevent somebody from making changes directly to production, which is a, usually a, a big no-no. So we're going to showcase what that looks like, showcase the actual approving uh, of that pull request. And then you'll be able to see the changes that we make getting merged into the production system in real time without you having to pull the system down, uh, make changes during a maintenance window. So obviously there are certain cases where you don't want to do this, such as in a validated system, but the fact that you can push these controlled changes uh, very, very quickly is a really neat part of the platform. And then if we have time, we can showcase some of the other features, such as how we can uh, uh, automatically recover from uh, system downtime and some of the auto healing portions of the platform as well. So I will go ahead and uh, share my screen and walk through this demo with you. Uh, make myself the presenter. And you should be able to see shortly uh, the Ignition Designer Launcher here. So I've got two applications in here. We've got a dev instance, which is running live on Factory Stack, as well as a production instance. And I'm going to go ahead and launch the dev instance right here. You'll see this is connecting to an Ignition Gateway. Um, and once it downloads the project here, it's going to prompt me to authenticate. Normally when you log in with Ignition, you're gonna be using a username and password that appears here on this little window here, but we're doing something different. It's really important, especially for life sciences, but for companies in general, that you have a single username, password, and basically identity that tracks you across uh, any applications that you're using. Uh, that's really important for data integrity, for business continuity. So when I go ahead and click on this, we're using a feature of Inductive called uh, External Identity Providers. And this is taking me to a Microsoft Online uh, domain where I'm going to log in with my uh, email address and password. Um, I have policies set up that are going to enforce multi-factor authentication. So on my watch right now, I just got my uh, notification to approve. And that's actually going to sign me into the Ignition Designer. And so now I can go ahead and pick the project uh, that I'm going to be working in. So I'm going to pick uh, the demo project, which I'm opening right now. This is hosted live on the uh, Factory Stack platform. And so if I go over here, you can actually see just a really simple screen with a simulated sine wave and then a title here for a time series, um, a time series chart. So I'll drag the Ignition Designer over to here once it starts up. And I'll show you what the actual editing experience is uh, to, to make these changes. So we do have a bit of a um, uh, kind of a a sample project loaded in here to show you with the screen, but basically out of the box, you have the uh, a database connection that's pre-configured without you having to do anything. 
the connectivity to uh, Azure AD or your identity provider of choice is also pre-configured. And the integration with version control is also pre-configured, which is pretty neat. So I'm just gonna go ahead and go to uh, the screen that I have in here. And I have a view, um, this is the one that I showed you on the screen. Again, very, very simple. It's got a chart mapped to some simulated data, and then I have a title. But let's say I wanna go ahead and make a change, like I wanna change the, uh, the title. So I'm gonna call this uh, Virtual ICC X. And you can now see the new title is reflected here. I'm just gonna go ahead and save my designer. And now what's really cool about this is that in the background, this change that we made is getting propagated up to a Git server. And so what I wanna show you is now as a developer, what's my process for taking these changes that were only made in development and getting those up to a production system. So to do that, I'm gonna go back to my browser here and I have a couple of different profiles that are meant to represent different uh, users. So for example, this is my, my, uh, my personal account. I'm gonna log in here as a developer. So here's my developer browser. And we have this provided uh, Git instance hosted on factory stack here for the demo instance. And I'm able to sign in with an OpenID provider, which for us is Azure AD. So the same way I'd be logging into my admission application or my Office 365, I'm not logging in here. So it's gonna ask me for a username and password. Uh, let's see if I wanna stay signed in or not. And let's go back to the home page here. And now this is basically the ignition repository. Um, so I can see in here that 59 seconds ago, there was a change that was made to the demo project. That's the one that we're working in. And uh, this is my main branch. So main is basically linked to the development instance. I also have a prod branch in here, which uh, you can see this was edited you know, 12 hours ago. So um, a longer time ago, but I have two separate branches that are meant to represent different environments within my, my instance. And as we'll showcase in the, uh, the replay of the session tomorrow and with the Get Serious demo, you can have as many of these as you want. So we're, we're doing this with two to kind of be simple. Um, what I can do is I can go ahead and generate what's called a pull request, or some tools may call it a merge request, where I'm going to request that the changes I make in one branch get pulled into another. So I'm my developer, I made my simple ignition change. I'm gonna go ahead and generate a new pull request. And I wanna pull into the production branch the changes I made in main. And I get this very nice uh, you know, textual and kind of visual comparison of what those changes look like. So here you can see it's a little bit small, but you can see the chart title here was changed to virtual ICCX. And then I've got an actual um, diff view in text format of that uh, text field, with, uh, which is a property of that component being changed. So I can see what's gonna basically be in here. I click new pull request and uh, you know, I can choose basically a title for this and I can go ahead and say, you know, uh, changed, uh, uh, I'll just say title of, chart components, and I wanna go ahead and click create. What this gives me is a history view of any changes that have been made um, as a part of this pull request. So let's say, for example, I wanna have a conversation, I wanna have this be reviewed by other folks. I can go back and forth in here, I can push other changes, and it's a really nice way of tracking all of these different, uh, all of these different changes in a single place for auditing purposes or just for, for general version control. So that's the experience of creating that pull request. The next step is actually approving that, merging that into the production branch and showing that change propagating through. So now I'm going to uh, be a quality person and I'm gonna do the exact same thing. I'm gonna log in um, using my, Azure, my uh, Azure Active Directory account. Here, this is a QA account. So I'll go ahead and log in. Uh, sure, I can stay signed in. And now I have a very similar view You'll notice this little one here next to pull requests. That's basically telling me that I have something that requires my attention. So I'll click here and you can see this is the one that was open just under a minute ago. And I get the exact same view of uh, this sort of history view. I can go look at the commits themselves. I can see there was a single commit from that single designer save that occurred. And it'll give me the same diff view. Um, I could also go back and basically look at the files themselves that change. So this is a resource.json file. This is a thumbnail that's generated by, generated by Ignition. And then here's the actual view by itself. So in any case, uh, once I'm kind of done reviewing these, I can similarly go back and forth and have a conversation. I can say, I don't like something. I want something to be changed. For our purposes, we're gonna go ahead and merge this pull request and show you what happens. Um, as soon as I do this, the change is gonna propagate very, very quickly. So I'm gonna 
take a quick step back and show you kind of the before and after. And then when I hit this button, you'll see that change come through automatically, which is which is pretty neat. So let me move this off to the side here. And I'm going to go to my view over here. And so I basically have this is the uh, uh, this is the dev instance that we made our change to. You can see the virtual ICCX title came in here. And this is my prod system, which is based off the, the previous uh, pull request. So it looks pretty much the same, um, but the chart title still says chart title. And this is our dev instance. So what I'm going to do is go back here and hit merge pull request and enter a comment. And when I do that, you'll see this prod branch here have the title get updated without us having to do anything else. So um, I'm going to say reviewed, uh, approve the PR. I'm going to hit merge. And you'll see this has a status of merge. If we watch this screen here, and after a few seconds, you'll see right there, we have the new title come in, zero downtime, the application is still running, we're still collecting data from uh, devices and all of that. So. That is a really cool out of the box function that we provide to allow you to very easily migrate changes between dev and production environments and anything else in between. Um, that's pretty much it for the demo. Um, the one thing I'll highlight as well, uh, which we can showcase, is we actually have the ability to, uh, to, to kill this instance, which is simulating that maybe your server goes down or there's something that happens. So um, I'm going to go ahead and actually uh, simulate us killing that server. Um, so you should see the connectivity here gets lost. Um, I'll kick it over to you, James, to, to uh, take over the, the presentation. But basically, without us doing anything, this will come back up all on its own. Uh, a lot of times before you as a user may even realize that it's happening, the platform will pretty much auto heal this. So if we have uh, time, we'll maybe we'll come back to this and kind of show the, the screen up and running. But it's uh, basically part of the auto healing portion. And, and, and it's maybe worth just uh, just highlighting for everyone, the, the way that that works is it's using what's called an orchestration engine, um, which is is monitoring all of the containers that are running in the in, in the pod, and it uh, it automatically uh, heals itself when, when Joe uh, introduces this error. Um, it's also worth noting that uh, in our Microsoft Teams, uh, we get a notification whenever this happens, and we also get a notification when the auto heal is completed. So uh, there is a, a full integration of not not only the um, the actual DevOps environment, but also the monitoring and the management of each one of the uh, the environments that's created uh, for the users. Uh, so thank you, Joe. Um, I will uh, change myself back to the presenter, and I've been made a presenter. Uh, can you guys see my screen? Can everyone see my screen? Uh, I cannot. There, oh, there it goes. I just, I was, just start flipping over. Just, just takes a second. Sorry, guys. Um, so. Thank you, Joe, for the for the demo. Um, so, so to summarize, what, what may not have come through completely clearly in that is that all of what Joe showed is built in. There's zero configuration from our end users. There's zero configuration that you need to do to be able to actually implement and do what Joe just showed. So, uh, out of the box, a single instance factory stack or farm stack has the automatic commit on save built in. So it's going to be capturing source code changes automatically. And then when you do set up a multi-environment setup with approval workflows built in the middle, again, that's all pre-built and pre-canned. So the experience that your users have is similar to what Joe just showed. And behind the scenes, that's that's what we provide is all of that automation. You were about 10 seconds um, that slide, James, and the server's already back up without us having to do anything. So auto yeah. usually takes about an hour and a half, but pretty, pretty neat. Timing was a little bit off. So uh, to, to highlight, you know, both factory stack and pharma stack are really designed to try to to try to solve several problems and 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 to be able to deliver that value uh, ultimately to to you as the end users, which is scalability, security, management, and ultimately in cost savings. Um, so with that, I'll uh, I know we're running a little short on time, so we'll open it up to Q and A. Uh, does anyone have any, if you have any questions, you can uh, enter them in the questions section down on, on the uh, GoToMeeting, or uh, if you want to put up your hand and ask a question, you're, you're welcome to do that as well. Um, all right, looks like, looks like we have a question in here, Joe, it says, uh, what orchestration are we using? What, 
Massachusetts. I don't know if you want to explain a little bit more about the orchestration and what that is. Yeah, so uh, we're using a tool, uh, I think it's James's favorite word, called Kubernetes. Um, so that's an industry standard, it's basically spun out of Google. Um, it's used by leading IT companies around the world and now some OT companies as well that uh, takes care of um, taking uh, applications that are meant to be sort of unchanged, things like uh, ignition running as a container, um, and can basically orchestrate those or make those run across multiple underlying hosts. So one of the really cool things about the, that platform is how it gives you this auto heal, auto healing ability. So for example, if you've got multiple VMs or multiple computers and one of them fails, we can take that workload, in this case, Ignition or Gati or any of the other services that we're providing and migrate that over to a new working host all by itself without us having to make any changes. So that's a really powerful um, thing that these orchestrators give you. Uh, Kevin Collins did a session as well uh, about uh, using Ignition as containers and there's other orchestrators out there that are much simpler that you can use on a single host, for example. If you have um, things like Docker, or Docker Compose, Docker Swarm is another one. A lot of times those are used on kind of a single host. Um, here we're able to orchestrate across multiple computers, which gives us better uh, resili uh, resiliency to different kinds of errors and uh, the, also the opportunity for redundancy and scalability. So great, uh, great question. Cool, thanks. Uh, another question here is, do you have to host this system or can you set it up in our Azure Cloud system? I'll let That's you answer that one too. Yeah, so uh, so we can support both. So by default, um, we try to you know kind of enable you to have a, a hands-off approach where we'll go ahead and host. You don't have to have any cloud engineers or know what Azure you know know how to spell Azure. Um, so that's kind of the hands-off approach. But a lot of companies, especially larger companies, already have uh, maybe enterprise agreements with a provider like uh, like Azure or AWS. And so we do have the ability to deploy into that environment. Uh, we work with you and your IT team to figure out the right level of access that we need to be able to deploy workloads and then to manage those. So uh, we can do both, for sure. Cool. Uh, another question here is, um, it says, how does it work when new updates are pushed? How does my system get updated? That's probably someone concerned about whether or not their systems are gonna be updated uh, while they're functioning and operating. So. Yeah, so we, you know, I could take that one a little bit, and maybe James, you can you can expand on that. So we we showed an example of doing a live push to production, which works in certain scenarios, and certain scenarios it doesn't. Um, so when you talk about updates, there's updates to sort of the underlying you know virtual machines, the underlying compute. Uh, there's application level updates, and then there's updates to things like ignition itself. So inductive drops a new version. Um, one thing that we don't do by design is we're not going to force you to upgrade to a, a new ignition version, for example. We basically have a, uh, it's called a repository. We have a container repository where we will push the new version of Ignition after we've done our own tests and regression tests, and then make that available to you to coordinate that update when it makes sense for you, whether it's during the maintenance window or after you've had some time to do some testing or you're really ready to, to do a validation of that. So we do our own testing, make it available, and then we coordinate with you to actually get that deployed. Do you want to add uh, sure. teams? I, I mean, I, I think you did a pretty good job, and I, I know uh, I know there's a lot of people here that uh, probably have other things coming up in the next couple of minutes. So I think uh, any of the other questions that were answered, we will uh, we will reach out to you individually and answer those questions. Uh, should there be any other questions, of course, please don't hesitate to reach out. We'll give our contact info on a slide or two here. Um, but it's probably most important right now that we uh, we announce who the winner was. Um, GI, do you want to jump in? Yes, James. Can I get a drum roll? <laughs> and our winner is Joe Harrell. You have won a pair of the Apple AirPod Pros. Congrats. Uh, we yes. will be uh, reaching out and uh, get your contact info and, and, and send those across to you. All right. Uh, and uh, we do have a little message here from uh, Geralt the Giraffe. Hi, this is Geralt the Giraffe. I wanted to invite you to come and watch the 4IR podcast, Heads in the Clouds. It's a lot of fun and I really enjoy myself every time. Thanks everybody. So watch our podcast because Gerald said so. Uh, Hi, this oh, no, please don't do that again. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, so we, we invite everyone uh, to please connect with us on LinkedIn, uh, reach out to us via email, phone, pick carrier pigeon, whatever is the most convenient way we'd love to talk. Uh, we really do enjoy walking through and working with folks on different architecture options and plans. So 
uh, yeah, we'd love to connect and uh, we look forward to speaking to you. Thank you all for your time and uh, enjoy the rest of virtual ICC.